All right, so I know that this topic has been talked about a lot, but I just wanted to do a quick video on whether RAM speed actually matters or not. Now we'll be testing a, a few scenarios here, a few games. On the left, we'll have a normal no XMP memory running at 4,800 megatransfers per second. And then on the right, all I've done was enable XMP. This is DDR5, 6,400 megatransfers per second, CL32 in XMP. And we are using an RDX 4070 Super paired with the 4,600 KF CPU. What I'm going to be doing is I'll just be enabling DLSS at 1080p, setting the settings to medium, and then we'll also test more real world scenarios, for instance, 1440p on the high preset, etc. Just a bunch of games and uh, let's get right to it. All right, now, first up, we have, as usual, Robocop Rogue City. It's an Unreal Engine 5 game. And as you can see here, even at 1080p medium with DLSS set to quality, so 720p resolution, there's really not that big a difference between the two. Uh, the lows are actually higher on the left than on the right and the averages are pretty much the same right just the run to run variance so no real difference here between 4800 megatransfers per second and 6400 megatransfers per second all right so another popular game currently is the first descendant and <laughs> reviews are out on this it's very mixed just a short run at 1080p medium you can just see that the the lows are, are much much higher on the right uh, i just did a short run because i forgot to run on the left hand side for some reason and now when we actually do a full run yeah i remembered to actually press shift and run you can see that there's not much between the two the the averages are pretty much the same you can see that the gpu busy deviation between the two are sitting between three and four percent or is sitting between three and four percent so really not that big a difference actually when we start running back you can see that the lows are slightly higher on the right but it does even out a little bit and i'll just chalk that up to run to run variants as there's really no big difference between the two now next up we've got dragon's dogma 2 just running around in the main city which is extremely extremely cpu bound i've done a few videos on this specific game if you want to check out my channel but here you can see that the lows aren't that big of a difference we are seeing like six frames per second higher on the 0.2 percent lows that can impact your your experience but the biggest difference here comes in the form of the averages right you can see that we are getting around 13 to 14 frames per second higher on the faster memory when we are very very cpu bound in this game now if we move over to 1440p on the high preset nothing changes because we are still extremely cpu bound you can see that our gpu usage is sitting at 70 percent our gpu power is sitting at 141 now the the usage and the power is slightly higher on the right and that's why we are getting a much higher frame rate on the right now basically what faster ram does in this scenario in most scenarios actually is just it enables the cpu to be able to prepare more frames per second and then if your gpu is capable it can render more frames per second right so that's why ram speed matters more when you are actually cpu bound right so next up we've got a cyberpunk another personal favorite of mine and uh, just running at uh, 1080p low DLSS set to quality so once again 720p just to enforce a CPU uh, bottleneck typically you'd run these tests with the 48 or a 4090 I don't have a 4090 so I'm just making do here with what I've got and you can see that although there's not a big difference in the lows once again there is a pretty big difference in the average uh, this is a very very cpu bound scenario even at 1440p with dlaa no dlss no frame generation i'm still cpu bound with the setup in this scenario so that's why i test here right so now if we kick on 1440p high uh, once again with dlss set to quality you can see on the right hand side we are now more or less 10 11 percent uh, gpu bound or cpu bound sorry it's more or less the same as on the left and um, the lows are just slightly higher on the right but because both are are more or less uh, gpu bound not not always but it's more gpu bound than the previous uh, scenario that we tested you can see that there's really not that big a difference between the two although it starts to to make a bit of a difference on the right now where we see around eight frames per second higher with the faster memory so then I just wanted to test one more thing, just enabling frame generation. Yeah, uh, 
I know that uh, frame generation is a very divisive topic, but uh, I, I do play with frame generation enabled. And now you can see that so far, there's really not a big difference between the two, except in the lows, we do see the higher high lows on the right hand side, the 0.2% lows uh, specifically, but the average frame rate is pretty much the same. And that's because uh, frame generation actually works better when you are CPU bound. And on the left, we are slightly more CPU bound than on the right, and it can make up that difference so you can see that the performance is pretty much the same here except for the slightly higher lows on the right right so next up we've got spider-man which is notorious for being a very very cpu heavy and you can see that our gpu usage is sitting between 50 and 60 percent and um there's a big difference in the performance here. This is actually one of the highest that I've seen in my personal testing. You can see that there's around 20 frames per second difference between the slower memory and the faster memory. The lows aren't that big a difference, but the 0.2% lows are slightly higher. Right, so now if we just enable ray tracing still at the same settings, 1080p medium with DLSS set to quality. Ray tracing in this game is also very CPU intensive. It, it adds quite a bit more load on the CPU. And you can see once again, we are seeing a difference of around 13 to 15 frames per second and once again better lows on the right which definitely will impact your experience playing this game now if we move over to 1440p on the very high preset to try and uh, get the game to be a little bit more gpu bound we fail miserably because we are still cpu bound and you can see that there's still around a 20 frames per second difference between uh, the left and the right the lows once again up to this point really not that big of a difference it's actually slightly higher on the left so i just uh, chalked this up to run to run variances but you can definitely see a difference in the average there which is around 18 frames per second higher on the right now if we kick on Ray tracing once again just to add a little bit more load on both the CPU and the GPU you can see that we are pulling ahead once again with the, the faster memory sitting with around 110 frames per second on the light and the left and then 123 frames per second on the right and now the lows are once again slightly higher on the right nothing game changing except for the one percent lows that is actually slightly higher all right now moving on to Jedi Survivor at this I hate benchmarking this game, but I wanted to throw it in here because it is also very CPU limited, especially in the specific area. And you can see that our faster RAM is actually making us uh, slightly more GPU bound than on the left. You can see our GPU usage is uh, slightly higher on the right and our performance is actually much better. And you can see the stuttering on the left is definitely more pronounced. All right, so 14 frames per second in the average, but much better lows with the faster memory. Now, next up, we've got Ghost of Tsushima and we're nearing the end of this video. So, I mean, this game is very, very well optimized, but you can still see that there's around five to 7% difference between the slower and the faster memory at 1080p low with using DLSS quality. So, uh, I'm just going to let the next setting run as well while I talk. So does faster memory make a difference? You can see definitely it does. Even when we think we are GPU bound, we we aren't really in most of these scenarios that I tested. So in, even then, faster memory does make a difference. So I'd say if you do have a fast memory and you can get XMP to run stable, it's free performance you can see we're getting around 20 frames per second higher on the right now whether that's going to matter to you whether you're going to be noticing that or not is up for debate but you'll definitely notice the higher lows with faster memory right thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit that subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one